When you meditate, you have to tell yourself you have no other responsibilities right now. You're here to look after the mind. The mind spends its days looking after all kinds of other affairs. Your affairs, other people's affairs. Just looking after the body is a major issue. Trying to find food, clothing, shelter, medicine. That's just the body. Then there are all the other people around you. So the mind ends up spending its days running around. It's like living in a house with lots of leaks in all the roofs, all the roofs of the house. And you're running around with pails to catch the water leaking in. So it needs time to rest, to put aside all its other responsibilities, so it can gain the strength it needs to look after itself as well as to look after its other duties in the course of the day. But for right now, you put aside those other duties. You're just here to look after the mind. And the mind, like the body, is, has its food. And there are ways of exercising it to making it strong. That's why we meditate. Meditation is good food for the mind. It spends the day usually eating junk food. So it's time to give it some good food. Focus on the breath. And as you breathe in, breathe out, start out by reminding yourself you're here for true happiness. True happiness is something that's not selfish. Because if you're truly happy, your happiness comes from within. That's the only kind of happiness that's really solid. And the happiness happiness that comes from within doesn't take anything away from anyone else. And you end up actually having more to offer to other people as well, when the mind is really strong and healthy. It's like when you're physically strong and healthy. You're not sick, so you're not a burden to the people around you, and you have extra strength to help people with their issues at the right time, at the right place. So once you remind yourself of why you're here, that in and of itself is good food for the mind. The reminder that there is a true happiness that you can gain through your own efforts, and it's not a selfish happiness, that such a happiness is possible. That's a good thought to keep in mind, because in a world of zero-sum games, the basic assumption is the more you've got, the less somebody else has. The more they've got, the less you have. And it's a constant battle back and forth. And the question is, are you going to work for your own happiness and be selfish, or are you going to sacrifice yourself for the happiness of others? But here you don't have to think in those either-or terms. The more happiness you can build inside, the better it is for everybody. That in itself is a really nourishing thought. And that's a wise thought, because it reminds you of where to look. You look inside. So try to fo focus more attention now on the breath. Notice how it feels when it comes in, how it feels when it goes out. You can focus your attention on the breath any spot in the body where it's clear. Now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. And allow that spot to be relaxed and comfortable. Notice what kind of rhythm and texture of breathing helps to keep that spot comfortable, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out, so you're not pulling it in or pushing it out or squeezing it out. When you find yourself squeezing out the breath energy in the body, stop. Let the breath come back in again. When it starts feeling strained from having too much breath, then let it go out. An experiment to see what the right rhythm and texture of breath is. 
and it'll, it'll change over time as the body relaxes and the mind begins to settle in. The needs of the body will change. So try to keep on top of that as well. You have to be constantly alert. for how things feel with the breath in the body right now. And then ask yourself, what kind of sensation of breathing would you like right now? What would feel really gratifying? What would satisfy the body? Does it feel like it needs more breath energy? Okay, give it deeper breathing. If you're feeling tired, you might want to, want to try long in-breaths, short out-breaths to give yourself energy. If you're feeling tense, you might think short in, long out, to help you relax. And remind yourself that the breath is not just air coming in and out of the lungs. It's the movement of energy throughout the body, through all the nerves, out to the pores of your skin, as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Some parts of that energy move, other parts stay still, but it's all energy. When you think of the body in those terms, you find that the breath can be even more refreshing. Think of every cell of the body being bathed by the breath. If any parts of the body where it feels tense or tight or constricted, think of it relaxing. So there's no blockage of the energy anywhere in the body, all the way up to the tips of your fingers, all the way up to your toes. This is one way of giving the mind good food, a sense of pleasure and well-being that comes, from, comes inside. It doesn't have to depend on things outside at all. This is just the beginning of the path of meditation. The mind wanders off, bring it back. Wanders off again, bring it back again. Don't get frustrated with it, because it takes time to get used to looking here and staying here. Each time you bring it back, ask yourself, where could the breath be more comfortable? Where could it be more satisfying? Learn how to read the needs of the body, read the needs of the mind in terms of the energy flow that's happening right now, and explore the potentials for what deeper breathing might do, more shallow breathing might do, longer, shorter, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. When you breathe in, think of the breath energy coming in from all directions. That helps to clear away any blockages that may restrict the breathing process. One way to help with this is to keep reminding yourself to keep your hands totally relaxed, keep your feet totally relaxed. Because as they're relaxed, it helps relax other parts of the body as well. In this way, you're developing important qualities of mind that also help to strengthen the mind and keep it healthy. The first is conviction, that if you want to be happy in life, it's going to come from your own actions. If you're convinced that your actions really make a difference, that's got you on the right path right there. If you think your actions make no difference, that things are already set in the stars, or everything is just totally random. That weakens your resolve to really do something about it. Or if you think everything is determined by past karma, that's that gets in the way as well. Your present karma, i.e. what you're doing right now, makes a huge difference in how you experience the world. And it turns out that's the karma that really matters. That's the karma that's totally under your control, the kind of karma you can observe. What happened in the past, you have. You may have some memories, but exactly what 
action in the past connects with what you're experiencing right now, sometimes that's hard to trace. But when you're focusing on the breath like this, you can see intention, i.e. karma, in action. The way you intend to deal with the breath, the way you intend to treat the feelings of fullness that may arise, allowing them to stay, that's present karma. And it does make a difference in how it feels to sit here. It makes a difference in how you carry the body throughout the day and how you feel about the body. When there's a sense of well-being in the body that comes from the way you breathe, you'll find that you're a lot more skillful also in the way you interact with other people. You're less desperate for their approval, less desperate for quick fixes of pleasure. So the second quality, in addition to conviction, is persistence, that you really stick with this. The more consistently you stick with this, the better it gets, and the more it can do for you. If you just let the mind settle down only while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, you get some benefit from it, but then you can totally erase it within a few seconds after you drop it. This is why it's wise to stay with the breathing even as you get up and go about your business in the course of the day. The skills you learn here are not skills just for sitting with your eyes closed. They're skills for how you relate to your body in the course of all your other activities. It's simply that when you sit here with your eyes closed, it's easier to focus total attention right here. But then you want to be able to keep that atten intention, keep that attention focused on the side of the body all the time. This requires mindfulness. That's the third quality that strengthens the mind, i.e. keeping this in mind. And that's paired with alertness, watching what's actually happening. If you find yourself forgetting the, the breath, just remind yourself to come back to the breath. Each time you come back, it strengthens your mindfulness. And you want to be alert to what's working and what's not working in the mind. What kind of breathing helps the mind to settle down? What kind of breathing disturbs it? What kind of thinking disturbs the breath? What kind of thinking is good for the breath? The breath and the mind interact in this way. As you keep these issues in mind, you begin to develop the two other qualities that, are, that also strengthen the mind. There's concentration, the ability to stay with the breath consistently, with this sense of ease and fullness of body, and discernment as you begin to see cause and effect, exactly what you do that creates unnecessary stress and what you can do to stop that. And you see that the real causes are right there in the mind. You're craving and you're clinging. Those add to the stress. And then as you develop virtue, concentration, and discernment, this helps to loosen up that craving and clinging. So you're no longer so obsessed with it. This way the mind gets stronger and stronger because it's placing fewer burdens on itself. It's as if we spent the day carrying huge piles of garbage on our shoulders. And when other people ask us for help, we say, oh, I'm sorry, I've got all this garbage I've got to carry around. Or if you find yourself with sudden new duties, there's too much garbage on your shoulders, you can't take on those other duties. Which means, of course, that all that garbage is limiting you and your good things you can do for other people and the good things that you can do for yourself. So it's in your interest to get, let go of it, as much of that garbage as you can. Put it down. And how do you know it's garbage? Well, you have to look and watch. See what thoughts you're carrying around that are limiting you, that are sapping your strength, and learn how to question them. until you realize you don't want to carry those thoughts around anymore because they're totally useless. Or they may have their uses in certain times, in certain places, but not all the time. So many of our habits are things we picked up. They worked a little bit here and they worked a little bit there, and then you carry with them 
carry them with you wherever you go. There's a story of the old woman in Thailand. They say she found that she needed some straw one day. So that for that point on, for the rest of her life, she always carried a big bundle of straw around on her back in case she might need it again. Kept her bent down, kept her from being able to carry other better things around with her. So these are the qualities that strengthen the mind, that center around this practice of getting to know the breath energy in the body, because it's right at the breath where the mind and the body meet. And when they meet in a comfortable, mutually reinforcing way, they strengthen each other through conviction and persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. So try to bring these qualities to the breath. Bring these breath. Bring the breath to these qualities, and you find that that happiness you want, the happiness that comes from within, that's really solid, really reliable, becomes more and more of a reality. And as it does, you find you're not the only one who benefits. The people around you benefit as well. The same as when the body is healthy. You are not a burden on others, and you actually have extra strength to help other people with their tasks, too. This is a rare kind of activity, one that causes no harm to anyone. Try to devote as much time and energy to it as you can.